Добрый день, коллеги. Как слышно, видно? Прошу кого-нибудь ответить. Здравствуйте, все видно и слышно хорошо. Спасибо. Здравствуйте, тоже все хорошо и слышно, и видно. Вот на это. Нажали? Она горит, да? Горит. Ага. Слышно, видно? Да, все хорошо. Да, здравствуйте, видно и слышно. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Morning. From Moscow. And where are you come from? From Turkey. 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 Mm. Istanbul. Ankara. Ankara. Mm -hmm. <laughs> привет, привет. Здравствуйте, коллеги. Все слышно, хорошо видно. Здравствуйте. Уважаемые коллеги, мы будем начинать через несколько минут. Dear colleagues, we are about to start in a couple of minutes. We are still waiting for a couple of participants. Thank you.
Уважаемые коллеги, добрый день. Российская национальная библиотека. Library of Russia. Thanks you for connecting today to the round table of our conference. On behalf of the director of the National Library of Russia, I would like to greet you and uh, wish you good luck in uh, your presentation. I'm sure that the experience exchange that we are going to have during this conference will be beneficial. This round table was organized by the National Library of Russia with the collaboration of uh, Award Gold Trizini and the Worldwide St. Petersburg Club. The current demand and the requirements to libraries are very important today and they are really high. What a modern library building should be now? Which requirements are there? What factors influence it? And how does it help to attract potential users? What trends uh, are visible now? What are innovations? What architectural decisions would be of use? These and many other questions are going to be addressed during the current round table. Now, allow us to show a small presentation, a video clip about the National Library of Russia. Dear colleagues, a couple of organizational moments. We are working live today with a simultaneous interpreting conducted by the interpreter Irina. Also, we have here our guest, Olga Nikolska, the deputy director of the Gold Trizini Awards and uh, she's going to present uh, a presentation on that and Maria Limaeva, a specialist on the international department of our library. Now, please allow me to give you a brief talk on the history of the National Library of Russia. 
The National Library of Russia is one of the largest in the world. This year, we are celebrating 229 years since its foundation. There are 40 million storage units in our funds. More than 5 million remote users access its electronic resources per year. Today, National Library of Russia employs 1,300 employees. By the middle of the 20th century, the buildings built in the 19th century did not meet modern requirements and loads. And the question of building a new library building aroused acutely. The new building was built and opened on April 12, 2003, in the presence of the President of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin. It was built in the style of Leningrad Art Nouveau, using granite, marble, travertine for exterior and interior decoration. The interior design of the new building was very interesting. There are streams of light pouring from transparent lanterns installed on the roof into the atrium with a luxurious marble staircase. The building is decorated with 10 sculptures, allegorical images of sciences and arts, theater, architecture, mechanics, medicine, justice, religion, aeronautics, winemaking, philosophy, and music. In 2018, the second stage of the new building was commissioned. There are 52 repositories here for 12.5 billion million printed copies. The storage maintains a constant temperature of plus 18 degrees Celsius, relative humidity 50% in any weather outside the window, which is important for the safety of paper media. Separate halls are provided for literature in the languages of peoples of the USSR, literature from Asian and African countries. There are reference sections and halls for watching films. The fully automated telelift monorail system helps to promptly serve readers in the new buildings. The length of the book delivery system lines is about 1.5 kilometers. It connects all the storages of the new building with the departments and allows to significantly reduce the delivery time of books. In January 2023, an updated information center was opened in the new building, which combines several functions, a navigator for readers who came to the library for the first time, and a convenient place to work. Here you can learn about the specifics of reading rooms and collections, order online, work with domestic and foreign databases. Bibliographers will help you choose search strategies, give recommendations on working with sources, and teach you how to use the resources. Thanks to the center, the total number of convenient computerized workplaces in the building has also increased. The successful zoning of the space and the skilled work of the specialists have made the center a new point of attraction. In accordance with the law on mandatory copies, which has been enforced since 1810, the library receives from three to 14,000 copies of books published on the territory of the Russian Federation every week. Expanding the storage area for the annual increase in book collection is one of the most important tasks on the library's agenda. Today, the new building of the National Library of Russia is one of the largest in Europe. Its area is 110,000 square meters. The reading rooms are designed for 2,000 people. According to calculations, over the next seven years, all available storage spaces will be occupied by newly arriving publications. In this regard, the issue of designing a new, the third stage of the new building is currently being worked out, and a site has already been allocated for its con construction near the existing one. Dear colleagues, we are would like to note that today today is really important to conduct this round table to exchange our experience to hear the cases that you use in your own work and uh, we would like uh, to inform you about a couple of changes in the program of the conference the next 
presentation will be by Galina Gildebrandt, who is going to deliver a talk on the new technologies in the research and spatial organization in the libraries. She is the director of the research group on software. Dear colleagues, I'm very glad to present my talk today because we are talking about a very relevant topic. Many libraries have been built in the digital age. So now we are on the verge of transforming and modernizing experience for our users. And uh, the transforming of space is our priority. What can help the bibliographers and librarians to work in these conditions? This is what I'm going to talk about. My research that I'm going to present encompasses user wayfinding strategies in public library facilities, which was built in 2018 in the Library and Information Science Research Journal. Um, the main task was to study the psychological behavior of users during search for books in the libraries. This research conducted the behavior, and their behavior uh, was monitored by GoPro camera and uh, the audio recordings, which managed to track every movement that the users were making. The main idea of the research was to make it practical. In 2018, we conducted uh, uh, the research in our library to assess the quality of the spatial sign navigation in the library. Uh, and our aim was to assess the quality and to research into the user behavior uh, during wayfinding strategies when they're searching for information in the library to monitor the decision making we used gopro technology it allows to connect the camera to the person's head uh, which shows everything that the person sees and transfers the information to us during wayfinding strategies we could see um, the way how people are looking, in which order they are looking at things. Uh, and this allows us to um, further identify where to put science and navigation systems. We had four groups with three people. None of them had um, a wide experience with library navigation. During these experiments, they had to perform several tasks, wear a GoPro, and uh, a step tracker, and comment everything they do. They also had a tablet with a task and a navigation observation map, where they had to track everything that they were going to ask and everything they were thinking about. Uh, in in a, should they have any issues, they could call a librarian or address someone that they could see. So they they always had a way out. Here is uh, the example for the task that the group had. They had to find several tasks without addressing any librarians. We had printed documents on the events. We had navigation walls. Uh, they could address the maps, but everything they did, they had to do it with the minimum help from the librarians. They had to collect blue cards that were put into the books. Here on the slide, you could see the example of the task you had. They uh, had to after they completed the task, they had to say what was difficult for them, what was easy, and share their experience. 
they uh, uh, also had to wear a step tracker and uh, at the end of the experiment the groups took a bit more than two hours did more than four hundred four thousand steps and uh, and they were talking for 54 minutes on the recording during the their expedition they found six books for exhibitions information about uh, the future exhibits and uh, they were talking to each other the library building was uh, quite small, so it was easier for them to just walk around and search for things instead of uh, addressing some printed documents or stands that were there with information. They didn't address any navigation signs. The most complicated things was to find a book in the open fund. In, five cases out of six they used an electronic catalog the fiction that was in english was managed to be found in less than one one minute uh, a bit easier was to find the book on the conservation the the reading rooms had signs with uh, big letters which you could see on the columns the book in question was at the end of the corridor and uh, the books were arranged by the alphabetical order and this created some issues with the participants uh, but uh, they managed to find the book without the help of the librarians here you could see uh, the shot from the gopro camera by one of the participants you could see that the signs are quite visible and the participants managed to solve the problem. Uh, in some cases, they had to address the librarian's help. Uh, despite the fact that every user goes through an instructions by the librarian when coming to the library for the first time, we still give them some spatial navigation instructions. Intuition wasn't of much help during their search. Uh, the biggest concern was with uh, the history book uh, by a famous author, uh, which was uh, in uh, the literature research section, but uh, the users were trying to find it in uh, the modern literature section, which was uh, a problem for them. Some spatial navigations was also very hard of use. You could see here some uh, shots from the uh, library and for GoPro. These are the cards that they had to find that were in uh, the book and they had to take them out. The navigation during uh, their library research wasn't uh, very difficult for them. It was more of an experiment and the questions they had to ask that they're outside on, on the slide, you could see that they were asking, just go and ask, how does it work? How are we supposed to know where that book is? Don't knock, it's a hospital. I wish we had a map on the first floor. I wish the letters were bigger. Uh, I wish we had a voice assistant which, which could direct us to the place. It was quite interesting to follow their behavior because I'm myself also a sociologist and uh, a researcher. In the final interview, I was trying to elicit the answer how they viewed the library descriptions, but None of them could identify what, what what abbreviations were there. They were not able to identify anything on the map. And the system of the books in the libraries was also uh, of a very big problem for them. The electronic catalog was a bit easier because it could 
direct them to a specific shelf, a specific floor that they have to go to. It was quite understandable for the users. After the end of the experiment, I was collecting information how to realize the ideas brought into equation and put them into life. We developed an innovative application of augmented reality and indoor positioning technologies, which could help define the specific book. I'm going to briefly talk about it. Uh, you could see there on this slide the information on the on the first experiment. Uh, the place where we conducted it was the National Public Library in Taiwan. It's one of the national libraries there. Uh, we uh, created the system of electronic education by no donkey or note, which used augmented reality and uh, used the technology of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. According to the researchers, the technologies in question uh, help to send the signal uh, on the territory of 50 meters which is quite enough to find a specific book that they were looking for. It's even a bit bigger than needed because we usually need about nine square meters. As far as I could understand uh, from the Chinese English, the users used specific rooms to identify the books in questions. The system was looking into the behavior of the students and uh, the authors called it the reading route. They assessed the readers' ways, the way they navigated, uh, which books they were taking, which books they were reading, and uh, this helps to collect a big amount of data. And uh, this helps to create a set of education materials which a standard user would be looking for. Uh, this is what they called uh, the uh, the reading way that they managed to direct readers of a specific specialty to the places that they needed to. There was an app with an arrow which helped users to find their way. So they're finding their reader's way, so to say. Uh, they were dynamic arrows that could be uh, put on their smartphone. The app also helps them to uh, read some recommendations uh, or to read about specific books. This augmented reality is currently being tested uh, in uh, one of the regions in St. Petersburg. And uh, by the uh, Mixar company in Yekaterinburg. Uh, by searching in the catalog, the user gets a QR code, which opens an app on their smartphone. And uh, the video that is being taken by their smartphone uh, is overlaid by the augmented reality, which helps users direct their way. The positioning is about four cells, so they had to find the books by themselves, but uh, this is the current maximum square that we're, we can allow. But this is exactly what they wanted. I have a short video which helps how to, which shows how to use it. It's quite short, only 30 seconds. I'm going to play it now. This is the electronic catalog, which helps you to find the specific book in the library. You click on it and get a paper ticket. Then you scan the code and it, it, it installs augmented reality into your smartphone. This is how you move around. It helps you find what you're looking for. 
Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I would be very happy to answer uh, or write me. I would be very happy to exchange experience with someone who is also studying the same topic. Thank you very much, Galina. It's a very interesting research and very interesting presentation. Of course, an augmented reality is very important because it's quite understandable. So it's a big innovation for the library. Thank you so much. Olga Nikolska, the deputy director on the award of Gold Trezini. The category was the uh, award of the best design project of library. Hello, dear colleagues. Can you hear me? Okay. So good morning, everyone. I present the annual reward uh, by uh, theater artists, restorers, artists, architects, designers of architectural specialties, special, specialties. It was established in 2018 in honor of the first architect of St. Petersburg, the Russian architect of Swiss origin, Domenico Trezini. Uh, I'm sorry, this is a wrong presentation. Dear colleagues, I beg your pardon, we have a technical difficulty. All right, here it is. The honorary chair of the International Council of the Golden Trezini is Mikhail Piotrovsky, president of the Worldwide St. Petersburg Club. Uh, we have 18 main nominations. And uh, one of them is the best design project uh, of the library. It was first announced at the Golden Trezini in 2021. It is the nomination of the awards partners, the Leningrad Regional Universal Scientific Library and the St. Petersburg Library Society. Uh, the International Council of the Award includes Vadim Duda, Director General of the Russian State Library. Among the jury members are Irina Semyonova, Director of the Library, and Zoe Chalova, Director of the Central Maikovsky City Public Library. I would like to direct your attention to the winner in uh, the nomination Best Design Project of the Library from last year. It was the uh, revelation of St. Nicholas Church from Antwerp, Belgium, by Thomas, uh, by Thomas Lemigut. This project was key to me because there are books stored in the library. It is very important to me personally. The project involves the adaptation of the former church for a book depository and the library of the ancient publications and manuscripts with the money of the private foundations. I would like to emphasize it. It was ancient publications and manuscripts. It gave the historical building a second life. Special project in the special importance is given to the light, which creates a special atmosphere in the building. It creates a very unique atmosphere. It permeates, penetrates inside through arches, round rosette windows and lancet windows. Another distinctive feature of the project is the designer bookcases made of old window frames. I was voting for that project because to me, everything is perfect. Please visit, visit the site and look into that winner. So the next question is how to take part in the Golden Trezini. Uh, the applications are currently 
still open and uh, they are accepted from February. On the 15th of September, we are turning off the button for application. So please, please uh, accept our invitation. Uh, you could go to the website that you could see on the slide. The award ceremony will take place on November 15 at the State Hermitage Museum on the stage of the Hermitage Theater. It's very important to talk about the winners, but I would also like to note the nominees uh, of uh, the last year award. In 2023, uh, we had nominations from Russia, Belgium, India, Iran, uh, Cuba, Peru, and Saudi Arabia. All the projects are available at the website by accessing, accessing the link that you can see on the slide. You would derive great pleasure from looking at those nominees. Uh, the finalist of uh, last year is also the project of uh, reconstruction of rooms of the library uh, in the name of Lihachov in St. Petersburg. The purpose of the library hall's construction project was to create a multifunctional cultural and leisure complex event rooms, lecture halls, exhibition spaces, and a traditional library. A characteristic feature of the new space has become the ability to transform to meet different demands. Functional and decorative interior items, furniture, book cards, stairs, everything is designed according to the general style of the project. The ergonomics of the space was calculated based on the needs of the, of the library workers. Another finalist is uh, rehabilitation and adaptation of, uh, of the building, which was formerly used as uh, the Bank of Northern Countries. I myself went there and it was just perfect. Since 1945, the library has been located on the ground floor of the building of the former United Bank of uh, Nordic Countries, an object of cultural heritage of regional significance in the historical center of Viborg on the very border of the medieval city and as a kind of gateway to the historical part of the city. In May 2022, the municipal authorities of the Viborg district transferred additional premises of 1,000 square meters to the library. The task is to create a truly urban project, a model of the library's interaction with society, the government, other libraries of its district, and the region as a whole. It's a greatly ambitious project, project and I believe in it. Next up is the Ismailovska Library in St. Petersburg. Working on the design of the rooms, the library staff chose the concept of the station, uh, namely the railway station, uh, and it was not only because geographically the library is located between the three stations, but also because the station is a symbol of the way to meet new, joyful uh, people of uh, dynamics, movement, good cheer, traveling. The general idea dictated the original names of the premises, information room, waiting room, uh, mother and child room, platform, a stylish hall has been designed for various events. There is also a co-working area. Uh, there are children and pensioners that could uh, go to a sep small separate room for workshops and computer and smartphone training. It's truly really magical. The next is the library in Nikolska Art School in uh, the uh, St. Petersburg region. The authors decided to take classical architecture as a basis, but to subject it to modern processing. To draw attention to the librarian's mailing desk, 
when paper depicting the painting the birth of Venus was used. To emphasize the orange color of the painting, contrast in green was added to some walls, noise absorbing panels and other interior elements. The library is designed not only for school children, but for all citizens and different zones have been thought out for, for them. The co-working has everything you need to for events, uh, a meeting table, an interactive whiteboard, uh, seats, mobile, uh, mobile parts that allow you to hold events without this mobile holes, which allow you to hold events without disturbing the idea readers. You could see how the whole space is being transformed. Uh, next up is the library of Karpovka, a space in the city center of St. Petersburg. Uh, the authors positioned the library as one of the organic elements in the concept of the development of uh, the Karpovka River embankment. When developing the design, uh, they chose a style that was close to the northern Art Nouveau, bright romantic and natural details on the main restrained background. Uh, in the lobby, visitors are greeted by a picturesque wall with architectural objects of the Karpovka embankment and green areas for relaxation from the hustle and bustle of the city. An equipped lecture hall with cozy co-working also appeared. It's a unique place. The next is the Library Cultural Multimedia Complex. We have uh, a cultural breakthrough going on in St. Petersburg. It's a unique project of the Kirovsky district of St. Petersburg. Uh, it used to be an industrial zone in uh, the Soviet times, uh, but now they realize uh, a creative space there called Portal. It's not just the library in its classical sense, but a modern multimedia complex where you can find co-working areas, individual cozy reading capsules, a hall for creative workshops, a photo zone, a VR zone, atmospheric art hall, a play area for children, and of course, not forgotten, but most important thing is books. The main difficulty in the implementing of the project was a very small space in which uh, we wanted to place and implement as many interesting ideas as possible and uh, we managed the task beautifully. Here you can attend the yoga class, an exhibition of modern and classical artists, play games in a VR helmet, and even print something on a 3D printer. The next is the Library and Cultural Center, NOTA, in St. Petersburg. NOTA is a renovation project of the library built in 1985. Uh, it was in the building of 137 series, which uh, was implemented in the Soviet times. And uh, the characteristic is that everything should be aligned. Everything should be the same. There are light lanterns, a line of second light, facades protruding towards the sun. Typical architecture is inspired by the search for light. A lot of things were brought up in the 1990s. Just feel it, almost 1,200 square meters. In the spring, NOTA opens with an exhibition of installations in empty walls. In autumn, it is fully equipped. The bookstore room is illuminated by stained glass. Look at it. What a beauty and mysterious mysterious corridors of monastic libraries. It is made in uh, the typical style of Renaissance libraries. There are golden piano frames lining in the reading booths. Metal pillars create the image of trees in the garden. After all, in monasteries, gardens for reading rooms. I am in awe. Next up is the branch of the Children's Library uh, in uh, the Volkhov city. The image of the Volkhov River was chosen to create the library concept. The library, like a big strong river, transmits its love 
energy and knowledge to the child, sending vibes of goodness and joy of knowledge through reading. The new library project will help to change the visual views of the library, which become a comfortable, modern space filled with information and new opportunities. It is a desire for change. It is a desire to achieve something difficult and challenging, but undoubtedly worth the effort. The next is the branch of the library uh, in Orsk, in Orenburgskaya region. The most important task of modernization was to fit the library into the urban context, to make it a significant factor in improving the social climate of the city. Now, the city has opened a library named Five Citizens, which will be an organic part of a comfortable urban space focused on meeting the needs of different groups of citizens, children, adolescents, adults, uh, older people and people with disabilities. It is important that the library itself is a recognizable urban space, and in many ways because the motto of the library's design has become the social brand of the city, the tram. The Five Citizens Library opens up new opportunities to create uh, for creative intellectual and personal development of citizens. The next is a concept of creating a new uh, library space in the library of Yesenin in St. Petersburg. The aim was to create an atmosphere of creativity and co-creation, to create interactive space without losing the main function, library. From the traditional book collection to virtual electronic services, uh, now there is not a single open space for art lovers in the district where the library is located. The Yesen Library, in a new format, will produce its own meaningful reboot and will become a place of attraction for people without age restrictions who are interested in new art and co-creations. I know the people who uh, designed it. They are really creative. The next is the least library and cultural center in St. Petersburg. It's a synthesis of a library and an art space, a laboratory of contemporary art. The goal of the project is to create a new library on the city map, which would become a point of attraction for the whole family. The proximity to the most beautiful parks is embodied in the interior, which is dominated by the light Scandinavian style with elements of eco-design. On the wall of the entrance area in the library, there is a panel made of stabilized moss which emphasizes the concept of eco-style and reminds visitors of contact with nature. It's a good and cozy space for sewing and creativity. The next is the project of renovation of Central City Library in Kamunar in St. Petersburg region. The renovation project is based on the industrial and social cultural traditions of the commune. Historical photographs of the city and the factory will be used in the interior of the library, and the motifs of paper production, wood, craft cardboard, plywood, which is directly related to books, book printing and reading, will be traced in the artistic solutions of the design of the space. The transformed spaces significantly expand the possibilities for holding various events. There will be places for children and quiet reading, communication, workshops, meetings with interesting people, and games tournaments. And now we are traveling to Saudi Arabia, Jeddah, public library. The library will become a meeting place for local residents who will definitely appreciate the atmosphere of friendliness and hospitality uh, lovingly created here. The project is based on the concept of psychological engagement. This is the name given to the practice of meditation, during which a person is fully aware and mindful of everything that is happening. This practice helps to relax, clear your mind, and enjoy a specific moment in time. Now we're moving to 
Peru, Iquitos, Loreta, a public library like Sharara. Turtle, this is how you can translate the name of the library, which, first of all, is dedicated to the diverse fauna of Peru. The exterior design of the library also implies a turtle. Streamlined shapes are a symbol of resilience and cultural significance. It is proposed to use bamboo as the main building material, since this corresponds to the principles of nature architecture. The main motto of the project is the connection between the love of nature and reading. So the author suggests placing green areas in the premises and reading rooms in the open area. This library project clearly demonstrates how the features of a particular region can be shown using architectural expressiveness. The next is the uh, library periplot, the reconstruction. During the reconstruction, the internal design and zoning of the premises were changed. The building was adapted to the needs of visitors uh, with physical disabilities. The main functional areas were lobby, uh, loan, concert and lecture hall, creative workshops, co-working, multimedia park. The reconstruction made it possible to make the library space, space unified and fully suitable for work and recreation of visitors. The installation of panoramic windows where the library fund and co-working are located, made it possible to fill it with natural light and open the view to the Neva embankment. The next is the Central Library of Faustovsky in St. Petersburg. The authors of the project have developed special storage systems to make the work of the staff more efficient. Uh, they have thought of various zones that allow everyone to find the perfect place to read or work. There were special rooms, zones provided for children so that parents can enjoy time for themselves. Uh, noise absorbing panels have been installed on the ceiling, which looks unusual, uh, but they're visible from the street and attract the attention of the local residents. A transformable event space has been developed. Uh, the library is equipped with a podium, which is not only the central architectural element, but also provides additional space for plants. Next up is the Iranian Library of Arts and Cultural Center in Iran, Tehran. Users of cultural spaces need empathy from not only the stuff, but also the interior. The need for which is more felt by children and adolescents a topic that many architects do not pay attention to. In this project, an emotional component is embedded in the design, acting on the feelings of the users. Symbols of Iranian art are also used in the stylistics of the space. An interface should be friendly. This is where it is fully realized. The Library of Noha Garden India, Rajasthan, Noha. Intertwined, curved volumes form an asymmetrical children's library and a public space for residents of the small village of Noha in Rajasthan, India. It is a village, a quaint rooftop garden accessible as an open space rises eccentrically to form a children's library in the northwest corner. A curved staircase leads to an underground outdoor auditorium and public space. Due to the hot desert climate of Rajasthan, the southern side of the building is protected by the instant earthen embankment, and the library and open halls face the northern side of the site. The project is designed to provide services to children for, from poor or rural families. I think this is genius. It's a great project. It's aimed not only at the development, but uh, also uh, at providing opportunities from, for poor families. Cube Library from Cuba, uh, Havana. The library project forms 
is from the three levels where the space is supported by two cubes that intersect at an angle. The style could be called minimalism, brutalism, or both. The building is trying to demonstrate its character, the feature of which are anxiety, provocation, the desire for change and movement. Thank you for your patience, for listening to me, and I invite you to apply for our award. Thank you. Thank you, Olga, for your report and allowing us to the, the colleagues to take part in the award. And it's great that we have partners such as you. Thank you so much. And we are moving on. And I am glad to give the floor to the nation's library of Turkey. And I would like to say that uh, since 2023, the National Library of Russia is collaborating with the, the Turkish Library, and we are also about to sign a, an agreement of collaboration. And uh, I hope that we will have a very fruitful collaboration. So the next stop is Birgül Unal, um, the manager Hello. of the Nations Library by the President of President of Turkey. Thank Hello. you so much. Um, okay, the architecture, design, and impact uh, on services of the nation's library. Uh, this is our uh, Jihan Numa Hall, uh, and uh, there is a, a surah of Al Arak 4 and 5, it is written here. And library buildings, 21st century library buildings appear as structures that aim to serve all ages and segments of the society in line with the developing technology and changing understanding of uh, education and training to have all kinds of technological equipment in the production, acquisition and sharing of information and to offer all these free of charge. Elements should, that should be in library buildings. When designing libraries, the expectations and needs of re reader groups of all ages and education levels should be taken into consideration. All details should be included for disadvantaged readers. Building air conditioning should be done according to seasons. The lightning, furniture, and shelves of the building should be designed to suit the readers. Sorry. Sorry for interruption. The technological infrastructure of the building uh, must be all at a level that can meet the needs of uh, readers and at the same time have a structure that is suitable for development and change uh, and uh, development and change. Adequate uh, ventilation systems should be uh, installed, especially in work areas. These should be adequate rest of areas for readers. Taking necessary precautions to ensure building security and reader safety. Library depository areas should be organized according to the material types like books, periodicals, audiovisual materials or non-book materials, etc. Building specially air-conditioned warehouses like temperature, humidity, and etc for the uh, protection and storage of rare and manuscripts. Providing easy to understand directions so that reader can easily find the relevant areas. These are the examples of uh, 
are depository areas. This is the book depository areas of the National Library, and this is the periodical depository areas of the National Library. To protect the health of readers and staff, regular building cleaning is carried out and waste in disposed of without harming the environment. Libraries are located in central locations and on the routes of public transportation. Good sound insulation should be done to avoid uh, being disturbed, uh, disturbed by the noise that may come from outside the building. The National Library Building. The library building is a structure that complements the pre pre presidential complex. The social complex includes the Millet Mosque, Congress Center, Exhibition and Dining Hall, Library and other public areas. Architecture of the nation's library, the formation principle of the library's design is based on some traditional shapes. These are cubes, cylinder and dome. The interpretation of these volu uh, volumes has enabled the creation of both original and innovative spaces. The central hall is placed in the middle of the composition and is topped by a double dome that is nation naturally uh, light through surrounding columns. The dome refers to the sun shining on knowledge and this hidden hall is waiting to be discovered by the reader. The height of the volume is accessed through relatively low doors to straighten, to straighten the surprise space effect for someone who discovers it for the first time. The circular main hall in the center is surrounded by books uh, storage located in four massive and deep logs emphasizing and the massive and strong side uh, of the hall. Constructing with the massive masses, uh, these four glass cubes dedicated to uh, reading move away from the center of the work to get closer to natural light and the columns and the shutters of uh, facade undulate the direct penetration of light into the environment. The architecture of the library is similar to the architecture of the past and ancient works. What is at stake here is the will to establish a link between today's works and the past archivists of the region, rich in remarkable uh, and sometimes uh, unique examples. The originality of this work is that starting from a contemporary synthesis, this is metaphorically and symbolically uh, inspired by the works of the past in order to provide a future for them. Menement effect of architectural work. The architecture of the library is a synthesis of the forms and compositions found in Seljuk and Ottoman architecture inherited uh, from thousands of years old works of art in central Anatolia. This will adhere to the past uh, is des uh, decisive. It is uh, the will to uh, always belong to the land we live on. On the other hand, the library was created in an innovative way in accordance with its intended use around a circular uh, central courtyard with rising peripheral columns at the edges. While its centrality creates a warm relationship with the reader, thanks to the, open, thanks to the openings extending from the core, and the other hand, the high columns uh, symbolize the monumental approach that reveals the idea of the sublimity uh, of knowledge and uh, our common belong belongings of this world. And this is the uh, our library's outside view. Uh, our library is the largest library uh, in our country, Turkey, and we have 5,000 people uh, sitting capacity in an area of 125,000. Uh, we have 2 million, uh, approximately 2 million printed books, 2 million issues of uh, 14,000 uh, printed magazines, uh, 67 databases and more than 240 million electronic resources.
and our library services uh, in the library area to meet the information and research needs to readers and to support education and uh, training activities, hosting architectural and cultural events, providing domestic lending service, and providing promotional and uh, social services. We have uh, six, uh, 46 expert counter personnel in the library for library services. We have an internal law service. This means transactions are carried out only between libraries, halls, and departments. Publications are not taken out of building. Uh, this is our library catalog, but it is used inside the library and effects to open, uh, efforts to open it outside the library are continuing uh, rapidly. Promotional services, it organizes tours to uh, introduced to Nations Library, its services and facilities. In these tours, visitors are provided with general information about the library, numerical data, and basic usage, uh, usage principles for readers. Uh, and these are the other facilities of the Nations Library, outdoor and indoor parking, working places, recreation area, photocopy, uh, newspaper and magazine reading room, locked safety cabinets, mosque, Patisserie, Wi-Fi connection, and dining hall. Uh, in, in the Nations Library, we have lots of uh, libraries and halls in, like Research Library, Jihani Ma Hall, Children's Library, Yacht Library, Rare Books Library, Reading Rooms, uh, Reference Section, Audio and uh, Video Library, and Educational Center. Uh, research library uh, has two floors and 20 group uh, study rooms and a uh, stink capacity of uh, 630 and the library has uh, 20,000 books. Uh, we are research library turn, turnstiles. All researchers with a baccalaureate degree, degree and above uh, can use this hall exclusively. And Jehanima Hall, uh, we, we call Jehanima Hall the uh, heart of our library. Um, there are uh, stink capacity for 2,224, uh, 200,000 books, books in uh, 144 different languages from over 110 countries. Presidents of the Republic of Turkey, Turkey collection. There are books belonging to uh, 16 Turkish empires and states. Nasirettin Hoca Children's Library has 161 uh, square meters, sitting capacity of 197 people. And this library uh, is for five and 10 years old uh, children. And the Yacht Library, uh, this is approximately 700 uh, square meters, sitting capacity for, uh, for 74 people and 12,000 uh, books. Rare Books Library, uh, there are 226 people sitting capacity, uh, have two floors, eight group study rooms, and a uh, rare books library turnstile, turnstiles are uh, researchers with a baccalaureate degree or higher can use this hall exclusively. Reading rooms and reference sections uh, located on the second and fourth floors uh, have uh, 9,610 uh, square meters and sitting capacity for 1,328 people and have uh, 300,000 books. Audio and video library uh, have 1,800 square meters area, 209 people capacity, and two floor, two digital rooms, and uh, some cultural and music research library in. Periodicals Hall have uh, 1,123 uh, square meters, sitting capacity of 193 people, and lots of current magazines and newspapers. We have educational center in the uh, National Library. 
Uh, we have science and technology workshops uh, and innovative center workshops, chess class, and uh, visually uh, impaired uh, technology class. The voice steps application has been de developed to serve our visually impaired readers to the Presential Nations Library. With the application, you can search for the location you want in the library and get directions to the desired location, the nearest elevator, information desk, prayer room, and toilet, etc. These are the links. And the Seeing Eyes application has been developed for Nations Library to serve all uh, our uh, readers, especially our hearing impaired readers. With this application, you can search for the location you want in the library and be directed uh, to the location you want in the nearest elevator, information desk, or prayer room, etc. We have uh, 67 databases and the these uh, databases can be accessed remotely by uh, 10,000 um, readers who are members of the library. And the National Library serves all its readers with the opportunities brought uh, by the digital age. In this context, readers who can, two key citizens, are enter the library and carry out all other transactions without needing a separate library membership card. Services provided by e-government membership, reader computers, photocopy service, e-resources, Wi-Fi internet access, and inter internal loan services, <coughs> sorry, individual and group study rooms. We have telelift uh, system in our uh, library. Telelift book transportation system is used in the library for storage books. This system was established for the first time in Turkey and the Nations Library. Approximately 14,000 books in our li library have been digitalized as full text. Partial digitalization of 1,885,000 uh, million books was made and added to automation systems. This is the partial digitalization uh, view of the uh, internet. Uh, our robot, uh, we have a robot and uh, we call the new member of the nation's library. We have an Italian hall and it is located on the first floor and serves in an area of uh, 600 square meters. It's a large area in designed for multi-purpose events. Selçuk Museum and Exhibition Hall is located uh, on the first floor and serves on uh, an area uh, of 897 square meters. It is designed to be suitable for all artistic activities with its large area and highlighting. The IP Exhibition Area uh, invitation uh, reception hall and minus second floor of the library. It is on the first floor and has been uh, prepared for special events. Divan Hall, it is on ground floor of the library and has a steam capacity of 400 people. Multiple events, interviews, etc. Et it is used for our president's uh, interviews are also uh, held in this hall. Um, and auditorium, it is located on the first floor and serves with a sitting capacity of 500 people and four simultaneous translation rooms in an area of 897 square meters. This hall, which has a high technological infrastructure, is prepared for events for all age groups. And also seminar hall, it is on the sixth floor of the library and is designed for private meetings in an area of uh, 610 square meters. And meeting room, it is located on the first floor and consists of a room, eight rooms with different uh, steam capacities, workshops, seminars, etc. designed uh, for events such as these, these rooms also provide readers with the opportunity to record video and audio uh, of the events and some cultural activities. And um, let me uh, add something. Uh, we, we, our library receives around uh, 3,000 visitors 
uh, on uh, weekdays and 9,000 approximately visitors uh, on weekends. Uh, thank you for listening me and library tour uh, you can enter. Thank you so much. Госпожа Анал, большое спасибо за ваш интересный доклад. Thank you very much, Ms. Anal, for your very interesting report. It's very was very exciting to learn about the experience from your library to our colleagues. I would like to introduce a bit again. My name is Maria, and I will continue to moderate the rest of the meeting. I would like to uh, remind you that you can address any presenters with questions or write something in the chat. If you don't have any questions, then we are ready to continue. And our next presenter is Yulia Martinkinaite, the director of uh, the library from Krasnogvardiski district of St. Petersburg. She is uh, from St. Petersburg and presents the Central Library of Gogol. Hello, Maria. Thank you very much for presentation. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Today we are talking about the libraries of the future, and we have uh, heard a lot about the modern innovative spaces. I'm sorry, we have some technical difficulties. We cannot hear you. I just sent you the request for the presentation. I don't know if you can see it or not. Uh, yes, you know, we have your presentation, we can upload it for you here. Yes, thank you. Can anyone see the presentation? Okay, now we see it. Great. So please let me continue. So talking about the Google Library, first we have to remember how it was built after the reconstruction. And the year I'm talking about is 2013. But uh, the history of the library begins in 1918. So a couple of years ago, we celebrated the 100th anniversary. We have a very rich history. In 2013, uh, the library was about to start a total renovation. Of course, there was a, uh, a great opportunity for the city, for St. Petersburg, because many projects were being opened, many buildings were being renovated. Uh, we have uh, there uh, a very big uh, cultural breakthrough. Many people were attending uh, this library. Uh, back then, you could see that we had, we had uh, a lot of people uh, visiting the library, and you could see there on the slide that even before, during the historical periods, people were also keen to visit the library. Uh, the library projects that that were being presented today uh, have also mentioned how history is important, how libraries experience, libraries history is uh, very important for its future and for the future innovations that are being conducted and modernized. Uh, now the new interiors are being introduced the name of the library is 
uh, the library of Gogol, a very famous Russian writer, and uh, it's very deeply connected with uh, that writer. We could uh, we could we could have decided to put that name to give that library uh, a sense of uh, creativity. Uh, we also added, uh, talking about the interior, we also added some uh, interior details and we made everything by ourselves. We added a couple of innovations, a couple of details, and uh, we also uh, get, got recommendations from the citizens of our district, uh, of uh, the neighbors, and uh, from our visitors. Uh, the library does not occupy the whole building, the one you see on uh, the slide. We only occupy the parts on the right. Uh, the square is 400 square meters, so it's not quite big. Uh, we have lots of corridors, lots of staircases, which, of course, we could uh, not change in any way, but we are happy to have them. We really like the historical sign that we got to have with our library. There on the library uh, facade, you could see how the space in front of the library is used. We uh, created a small uh, circle of forms in, uh, on the plaza in front of the library. Uh, we made it round and we planted some trees and flowers to make it neat and pretty. We wanted to create a whole, a whole city with the library and uh, the plaza near it. It was dedicated to Nikolai Gogol, the writer who our library is named after. Uh, we also introduced uh, the mobile shelves in our library. Uh, back then, in 2013, it was a very innovative decision. Uh, we also uh, got recommendations from Bureau Kids that helped us to create some new ideas and uh, put them into life. Uh, you could see the interiors being changed, being transformed throughout the course of the history. You could see the laconic forms, warm colors. Uh, it was in 2013, so everyone was keen on bright colors. It was a trend. Uh, we were keen on inspiring atmospheres. And uh, we, I really like the ideas that were mentioned today already about the emotional experience that we not only want to promote reading, but also promote uh, friendliness and uh, uh, the way the atmosphere, the way people feel in the library. Uh, a very interesting fact, St. Petersburg doesn't have a Google Museum, so our library also takes the role of the museum, and uh, we are trying to uh, introduce some parts of the cultural program, uh, include some parts of his biography that uh, could be beneficial for the readers. We also suggest different form, formats that are very rare in other institutions. So here you could see the, the room with fiction, and uh, you could see the metal staircases, and this is how it was transformed. Uh, this is a model, and it is uh, an online game. Uh, it uh, it starts in the central hall where the users could uh, walk around with uh, the tour guide 
and uh, the tour guide tells them about the history and the transformation of the library since 20th century. This new format is innovative. It was uh, created during the quarantine when, uh, of course, we could not communicate in person. And uh, we thought this as a very good idea. So here you could see our interactive space. When we got back the opportunity to come back offline, we introduced this interactive space in our library. Uh, it's an example of uh, how we use the cultural adaptations and the stories written by Google. Uh, there you could see characters that were uh, created by him. We are visiting different stories. Uh, we are introducing them in our interior, and uh, we also demonstrate various short films and uh, movies based on his stories. And uh, we really hope that we would be able to transfer uh, this information to other cities, to other countries. And uh, the next up, uh, the next motto that uh, demonstrates our traditions uh, is uh, the tribute album entitled Stories by Gogol. This is a manifestation of uh, music created by artists in different genres. This is the project made by musicians from different parts of uh, Russia. They got inspired by Gogol's stories and created these music pieces that we put onto the tape. Uh, we were happy to create that vinyl record, uh, but you could access it by using the QR code. Here you can see on uh, the slides uh, the streaming services by Yandex, VK, and uh, Sound. This project, we hope, will continue to thrive and will be living for a long time. Uh, there are also concerts being held with uh, those recordings that we made. The city is very happy to present its works. It's very interesting to note how uh, the library draws a connection between the history and the design and the culture that is being implemented now. Of course, it's very important for us to find our niche because we're living in uh, St. Petersburg. It's uh, a really huge city and it's very important to find something unique, something that only we could provide to attract the visitors. We know it's very challenging, but our experience of 10 years shows that uh, we have achieved great success in that. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. It's a very interesting report. Those uh, projects were very exciting. You, the, the way that you were talking about the Google and uh, the national and the cultural characteristics that you are trying to preserve. Any questions? Anyone? All right, then we are moving on. And our next presenter is Miss Udaya Cabral. She uh, is uh, the assistant director of conversation in the National Library of Sri Lanka. And the title of her report is the low cost public library designs for tropical climates with special reference to Sri Lanka. Please welcome. Hello, uh, good morning. 
Здравствуйте, да, слышим вас. Today our topic is the low cost public library designs for the tropical climate, special uh, reference to uh, Sri Lanka. So this uh, study based on the uh, program conducted by National Library in collaboration with the uh, University of Moratu and the Gauthier Institute of Sri Lanka. Uh, in addition, myself, uh, there are some co three colleague colleagues, uh, Mrs. Senadi Bandara, Fatma Ilma, and uh, Nimi Deshapriya joining with me uh, for this uh, program. Uh, the introduction, uh, Sri Lanka, you know that Sri Lanka is a, is a small country. We call it uh, Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. It's an island located in the Indian Ocean. It is very rich in culture, heritage, and the natural landscapes. Uh, its uh, history goes back to a uh, thousand years of, years of, uh, years of ago. Sri Lanka has been influenced by various civilization cultures' contribution to its unique blend of tradition and customs. The country's strategic location in the Indian Ocean has played a significant role in, in its history, making it a hub for the trade and cultural exchange throughout the centuries. Uh, Sri Lanka is experiencing clim tropical climatic conditions, especially monsoon winds, which play a crucial role in the shaping the country's weather. So, so the all the library buildings and other all uh, construction always align with this uh, cultural context and the uh, climatic condition of the Sri Lanka. So, especially we get uh, two uh, <clears throat> monsoons uh, from our uh, rainy season. It is the southwest monsoon and the northwest monsoon. The rest of the period uh, are very dry. So, in Sri Lanka, we don't have. Uh, different climatic uh, conditions. We have dry season and the wet season. So uh, we, uh, we have uh, around 1,500 public libraries across the country. So those library buildings always uh, align with the climatic conditions because the outside is very hot and the hu humidity condition is very high. So on the inside, we try to keep the uh, Lot low humid levels and the low temperature level inside the library. It is very useful to keep the library materials for a long time. So the public libraries are essential institutions that promote literacy, education, and access to the information across the nation managed by the government bodies. These libraries offer diverse range of resources and services, including traditional book collections, multimedia resources, and digital archives. Despite challenges such as limited funding, they have a crucial role in fostering learning research and community engagement through the partnership and digital initiatives. We have uh, three, four types of library, library libraries in Sri Lanka, especially for the public libraries. Grade one libraries are very small library. Grade two is smaller than the grade three. Grade one is uh, so bigger than the grade two, and we have super great library. In each each district, we have super great library. So those uh, <clears throat> libraries play a major role in our country to disseminate the knowledge. So we are, we we, we design some uh, building design for the public libraries, especially in the uh, rural areas. So many libraries in our country look in all library buildings. Some are in buildings, but they are not designed for the library purpose. Very few library buildings are specially designed for library purpose. From the study, uh, we prepared some uh, designs, for the, especially for the rural areas. Uh, we prepared uh, three library designs for the rural areas. This is the library uh, design for the coastal area. So Sri Lanka is an island. We have uh, uh, See around the country. So there are many libraries located in this coastal area. So this is the uh, library plan designed for the coastal area. Uh, at the inception of the design in phase, most basic requirements were added other than additional requirements for the architectural brief, considering the scale factor and the context which those types of libraries are going to be built. It is important that basic traditional form is incorporated into the design. 
as it will be accepted by the natural communities as well. Furthermore, taking more traditional form enhances natural cross ventilation within the build form, which creates comfort to the readers. This adds viability to the design in the sense of economy. Ultimately, the library gained high social acceptance if culturally more relevant form and material with low embedded energy are made by used. So we take maximum uh, effort to get the normal wind, wind ventilation in, to inside the library. So uh, it, it's because of the winds, uh, the inside the library become cool. So uh, it saves the energy. This is a library design too. The entrance lobby, which act as common space and as interconnecting part of the other two main blocks. The block which work as the main part of the building includes all library facilities. The two story block is double height, space in the middle. The children's area is separated from other facilities to keep a private atmosphere. The gathering is in the middle, as well as reading section and the common area. Although backup facilities are located behind the stacking classification and distribution of books takes in the same area. In the upper floor, computer section, archives, and administration areas are located. Because of the double height, the space administration body can inspect most of the activities easily. Building a library is not enough. The community should get help in funding. Multifunctional hall work as solution for this. This design is flexible to building stages according to the need. So we have added a small multi-functional uh, hall, which makes uh, earn money. It, it helps to sustain the uh, library. This is a library building design tree. The concept and the main design objective on this particular library design are to enhance the importance of the library as a community gathering place. The library is not considered as a mere book lending facility or newspaper reading area. The design also improves the idea of the library as the main resource provider in the particular community. The library represents a public square of the particular community. It creates platform for community gathering, sharing ideas for the well-being in the society. And most importantly, it provides knowledge and information to the society. This is the final uh, library design prepared by our project, especially for the rural areas. This is uh, just look like a modern library. The form, the front face is solid cube, which will be ideal in fitting into the upcoming urban landscapes. The lobby area is of double height, which will facilitate the readers with newspapers and magazines. Informal study areas are now becoming more popular among Sri Lankan students, and the veranda along the building allocates space for this. The shading canopy will cut off the sun and rain, while providing, providing a sense of enclosure. The interior floors can open plan concept. The landing and the children's section are located on the ground floor. The children's section is double height with bright colors in order to maintain the active environment. The staircases act as an element in children's section. The upper floor deck consists of reference section above the lending section and the newly added small digital library with computer above the stores. As a conclusion, uh, we can say uh, We can say library buildings are in line with the climatic condition of the country. Building designs are in the line with the social and cultural features of the country. The building should be sustainable, energy serving, maximum utilization of the available of natural resources because the we get uh, electricity from the water, from the hydro, hydro, hydroelectricity. So during the dry season, we will have to use all or the uh, diesel or the fuel for generate the electricity. So uh, the energy is very, very important. So we have uh, 24 hours, 355 days sunlight. So we get the maximum 
sunlight to the library, but we try to cut off the UV rays because UV rays are not used, not good for the library materials. The interior space should be utilized according to the needs and comfort of, comfort of the reader. So it is recommended establishing solar powered electricity generation panels established on the top of the library building as a sustainable measures because we get uh, sunshine uh, during the year and we uh, we get dry uh, season uh, in uh, three year three three months of the year so during that period we we can generate high solar energy so we uh, suggest we recommend to establish uh, solar panels uh, of, of the top of the library buildings that will, sus will sustain the library activities and uh, further improvement. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, dear colleagues, for this great report. It's very nice that you put the accent to climactic factors and how they affect uh, your work. If anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to ask. If not, then we are moving on to the next presenter. Uh, the next up is uh, Elena Rogozina, the director of the Central Public Library in Viborg. She is going to present a report on Alto Library, a space of opportunities. Elena, please welcome. Elena, we are waiting for you. Uh, I'm sorry. It's that's okay. Please let me share the screen. All right. All right, while I'm battling the presentation, uh, we could, uh, we have your presentation, we could open it there for you if that's okay. Yes, sure, please. All right, just wait a second. Our technician is going to put it up. So let me start. So this is already the second time when Viborg, the city of Viborg, is mentioned in uh, today's conference. Uh, the library of Alto is located in the city of Viborg. It is central municipal library. We have uh, uh, a very great location and a very unique building. Yes, please move on to the next slide. Uh, can I move it? Uh, no, all right. So this is the uh, only creation by the architect Alvar Alta on the territory of Russian Federation. It is the object of cultural heritage. It is the very first library of Alvar Alta where many technological innovations were being uh, taken into place. We are very famous that uh, the that because of the fact that this library was uh, the first in nineteen sixty one. We had a huge restoration. Uh, uh, the second renovation was in twenty thirteen, and. Uh, uh, the biggest renovation was uh, touched upon by the book uh, Central Hall. We wanted to create 
comfort and very positive atmosphere. That was our biggest goal. Uh, we introduced natural lightning uh, during long summer days. We uh, don't even turn on the uh, yellow light because we have enough natural light from the window. Uh, we were uh, introducing uh, open spaces, which was uh, very important for our readers. Uh, and uh, we wanted to put the library shelves not very high up so that everyone could uh, reach the upper shelves. Here you can see the children's library. Uh, it's located on the southern side. You could see the big panoramic windows. They are located uh, above, a bit above, so the uh, exterior outside uh, and the, the surroundings outside do not distract from working and reading. Uh, the play areas uh, are being uh, designed with uh, brighter colors. Uh, and as for the adult areas, uh, they are designed with more matte nude colors. And uh, of course, our biggest book depository, which is very uh, accessible by our readers because they can access it uh, by themselves. And we give the opportunities to freely roam uh, around the book depository to any of our users. Here you could see the lecture halls, workshops being conducted. Uh, we allow different opportunities for communication and uh, lots of uh, creative spaces. Uh, we are very happy to invite uh, different guests, specialists, uh, presenters who give lectures and allow us to share experience. Uh, we also have uh, an event for adolescents and children called uh, the Reading Viborg. Uh, it is conducted on the course of three days when we uh, read books, familiarize themselves uh, with uh, the authors. It's very important uh, for adolescents to talk about the books because the communication is uh, vital for this age group. Uh, we create both the space, the program, and spend uh, them for three, three days. And on the course of these three days, we talk, we share uh, ideas, we create new ideas. And it's a very creative space. The next slide, please. Uh, this is a unique hall. Uh, this is, of course, space designed for music events. The, uh, the most popular performers are the youngest ones, uh, our users uh, that come to our library and are very happy to perform there. Uh, here, there you could see uh, in the lower left corner the picture uh, of the stage inside the library and many people around it. A crowd has gathered to watch the musical performance outside the library. And we spent musical nights. Uh, we conduct musical nights at Viborg, and uh, uh, we also have many musical events with performers playing on different musical instruments. 
uh, our library is very welcomed by many children. So uh, not only adults could uh, uh, indulge into a good musical concert, but uh, we are also indirectly influencing our youngest users to listen to more classical music. Next slide, please. Next up is a theater space. This is one of the uh, prominent features of our library. A classic reading room could be easily transformed into a theatrical stage. So there on the slide, you can see uh, as a, one of the th uh, theater troops is performing in the one of our reading rooms. And we are very happy to introduce, uh, to, to invite different actors to conduct different plays. Dance space. Uh, I would like to mention the connection with the Google library that was mentioned today already. Uh, we, because we share one choreographer, uh, Anna is a great specialist, and uh, this is the person who unites our libraries. Uh, one of uh, the choreography plays was uh, performed in our library. Uh, there were choreographers uh, dancing in our library, and they were moving around our library, and we were moving with them too. They were traveling around our library, and we were following them as they were dancing around. It was uh, a great performance. Uh, it was a great composition of dance and reading. And finally, uh, well, nothing new, of course. This is the art space for children, events, for workshops, uh, art events, both for adults and children, too. Uh, we are now uh, going uh, through the introduction of uh, a new project of uh, art workshop uh, and uh, a book club where people first talk about the books and uh, then we conduct meetings with the writers and then we move on to create something with uh, our hands. So, a library, and I mean any library, has lots of great opportunities to realize the potential of any of our readers. Uh, we have lots of partners, and we are very happy to have them to create a new open creative space. Oh, thank you. Well, it was not me who was switching the slides, so I forgot about this one. Uh, this is uh, called Space Without Borders. I forgot about this one. Uh, every library should always be open to something new. I would like to invite everyone, if possible, uh, to invite to a tour that we are conducting. It's called a space without borders. Last year, we conducted this event. It was uh, conducted to the history of our region. It was in the format of a car rally. It was, of course, for amateurs, for families. Uh, dedicated to history. Uh, people were sitting in their cars, parents, children. They were following a specific route, performing, uh, completing specific tasks, which allowed them to learn more about the history of our region. This project was possible uh, thanks to one of our partners. And we are very happy that this format is uh, being
being revived now. Uh, we are also conducted uh, lots of different projects for tourists, and we are inviting them to this car rally, and they are very happy to be invited. And we invite you to it's it's on the 6th of July this year being conducted again. Well, that's right. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Yelena. I was excited to learn about your very interesting building. If you have, no one has no any questions. I would like to uh, remind that uh, we have a time limit of 10 minutes, so we are kindly asking you to give your report in under 10 minutes. And uh, next up is Jamal Yudin, the chief bibliographer of the National Library of Bangladesh. Hello. Здравствуйте. Yeah. Hello. Have you, have you seen my PowerPoint? Yeah, Hello. Have you seen my PowerPoint? Yes, we could see it. Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, for this uh, prestigious uh, program arranged by National Library of Russia. Uh, I am very uh, I am very happy to attend this program, and I would like to share my uh, architecture and design of the National Library of Bangladesh. Uh, history of the National Library. You know, the, the father of the nation, Bangabhuti Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, established the National Library in November 1973. It was has been under the Ministry of Education since it is inception. Subsequently, it came under the Ministry of Cultural Affairs. National Library of Bangladesh uh, was established in 1973. It is the legal depository of all new books and other printed materials published in Bangladesh under the copyright law. It is a government organization under the Ministry of Cultural Affairs. The National Library implements comprehensive library development measures and as a legal depository of the library under the copyright law. It plays a critical role, crucial role, in collecting and preserving the nation's documentary heritage Recently, the government of Bangladesh has taken initiative to promulgate the National Library Act, which is now at the final stage and under consideration of the government. The National Library has a close relationship with the National Archives as both organizations belong under the directions. You know, the, we have no uh, National Library Act. It is just ongoing to the uh, ministry. Uh, this is National Library building. Uh, uh, it is located at Sheri Bangla Nagar, Dhaka, Bangladesh, and it is established in 1985. Although National Library was started in 1973, uh, uh, that time uh, it was the uh, rented houses. Uh, it is overview of the National Library building of Bangladesh. Uh, very nice building uh, from the overview. Uh, side view of the National Library building. It was also very nice. And it is this National Library building, design and drawing by Majarul Islam, who was the world famous Bangladeshi architect. He was also our assembly building and others, uh, uh, some uh, important buildings also drawing and design by 
মাজারুল ইসলাম মাজারুল ইসলাম বাংলাদেশ ন্যাশনাল লাইব্রেরি বিল্ডিং বাই অবভিয়াস কন্ট্রাস্ট ইস লাস্ট বাট ফিনিট কন্টেন্ট অ্যাকসেসিবল অ্যান্ড স্ট্রাকচারালি ভ্যারি ইট ইজ এ সোশ্যাল বিল্ডিং ফর অল পিপুল সিংলি টুগেদার স্ট্রাকচার দ্যাট ইজ কালচারালি অ্যান্ড মেটেরিয়ালি গ্রাউন্ডেড আর্কিটেকচার মডেল অফ এন এল বি বিল্ডিং আর্কিটেকচারাল ভিউ ইজ ভেরি নাইস দিস ইস এ সেন্ট্রাল টাওয়ার অফ সেভেন স্টোরেজ এসেন্সিয়ালি হোল্ডস দ্য স্ট্যাক্স অ্যান্ড রিডিং রুমস অ্যান্ড ইট ইজ সারাউন্ডেড বাই থ্রি স্টোরেজ অফ টলার রুমস ফর অ্যাসেম্বলি অ্যান্ড অ্যাডমিনিস্ট্রেশন হু ইজ ফেন আউট অফ দ্য ভেরি ভেরি দিস ইজ দ্য দোজ ফটোগ্রাফস আর এ মিস্ট্রি এ পসিবল পেরিয়ড অফ দ্য সিমিং কম্পোডেরিয়াম হ্যাঁ দিস ফটোগ্রাফস অফ দ্য মডেল আর ক্লোজ দ্য পার্সপেকটিভ টু দ্যাট অফ দ্য এলিভেটেড এলিভেশনস অ্যান্ড শো দ্য ফুল হাইট অফ দ্য আপার টু স্টোরিজ বাট নোট দ্যাট দ্য ফ্রন্ট ফ্যাসেট আর ড্রয়িং অ্যাব দোজ স্টোরিজ ব্যাক আর নোট ফিল্ড আউট বাট গোস্ট অ্যালোয়িং দ্য ফ্রন্ট অফ দ্য ডমিনেট ডমিনেট অ্যান্ড দ্য অ্যাসার্টেড ইম্পর্টেন্স অফ দ্য ওভারঅল ডিজাইন অ্যালোন দ্য টু ফ্লোরস আর অনলি স্লাইডলি ভিজিবল অফ দ্য ফটোগ্রাফস অ্যাব উই স্কিয়ারলি আর অ্যাওয়ার অফ দ্য এক্সিস্ট্যান্স ফ্রম দ্য গ্রাউন্ড লেভেল অ্যান্ড অ্যাজ উই অ্যাপ্রোচ দ্য বিল্ডিং দে গ্র্যাজুয়ালি ডিমিনিশ অ্যান্ড ডিসঅ্যাপিয়ার এন্টারলি হোয়েন উই ইন্টার হাও অবার দ্য টাওয়ার অফ দ্য সেভেন সার্টেনলি অ্যাপিয়ার্স ইন ইটস ইন্টারডিপ কাওয়ার্ড উইথ এ মিউচুয়াল মুরাল অ্যান্ড সেপারেটেড ফ্রম দ্য আদার থ্রি স্টোরিজ বাই গ্যালারিজ অ্যান্ড ন্যারো স্পেস surrounding rising of the top the ascent contradicts and our come impressions of the exterior this is a mural of uh, a, this art is of the stack block wall of the library building based on the six regions of bangladesh uh, by artist ak malamgirok who lives in canada now the size of the art is white 72 square feet and the height is 52 square feet it is the largest face squat in bangladesh how their walls meet at the outside corners out of the exterior walls keeping the thickness of the separate walls and retaining their separateness as plants the vertical elements while they hold and contain the balconies of the top for present scenario of the nlb building back side view okay present scenario of the uh, nlb building is the front view okay national library building is front view we are uh, citing to the national library day this photo is showing the national library day preservation of books in the stack block of the nlb building inside view yeah the structure of this national library building area of land 2.36 acre building space 1,4880 square feet the stack block space where books are arranged in the preservation 48223 square feet reading room space uh, 8000 square feet number of collected books almost 105 million the 5 lakhs exhibition gallery 3200 square feet auditorium capacity 306 along with the rent our vision and mission actually at the national library is a depository library and repository library of bangladesh yeah our mission is to preach our history and heritage to preach our literacy to preach our political documents to preach our inner knowledge and future generation our vision the heart of the learning excellence and development for the archival services of bangladesh our values value them people value them integrity upholding the truth and excellence 
so are in beyond our uh, key manpower uh, we have 146 manpower uh, or the department of archives and library one of them the existing key manpower are showing here director general director uh, sequence according to sequence uh, director general director deputy director a chief bibliographer, deputy director, programmer, assistant director, bibliographer, research officer. You know, the bibliographer is published the national bibliography while working at the Department of National Bibliography. Research officer, programming officer, uh, and microfilm officer who are working at the microfilm to make microfilm for long term preservation. Yeah, functions. To accumulate the intellectual printed property within the territory or to compile, publish, and distribute the national bibliography, the award, attack, and the development of the services and provide ISBN. You know, the National Library of Bangladesh provide all publishers of the ISBN. Yeah? National ISBN agency as a national ISBN agency. Nature of collection, many types of collection in Bangladesh National Library like literature, cultural heritage, history, arts, archaeology, science, and etc. Uh, NLB analysis collection, equating publications under corporate tag, purchase complementary copies from other libraries uh, like uh, National Library of Korea, China, and uh, other, uh, other like these countries. Yeah. Our collection. Uh, 103 titles of newspapers uh, from the 1959, uh, English and other newspaper 30 titles, district gazetteers, number of maps, and microfilm role and microfiche. Beneficiary, actually readers, researchers, author, publisher, writer, professionals, people are history and intellectual property. That means all types of people are beneficiary from this library services of the nlb it means how many services from the national library reader service it is common service of all libraries reference service it is also bibliographical service only the national library of bangladesh there is no bibliographical services from other libraries in bangladesh photocopy service it is a common service of all libraries one is of isbn service i know some of the libraries uh, giving the ISBN services, uh, but uh, in Bangladesh, one stop ISBN services provided from the National Library to the publisher. Free internet searching and email servicing, microfilm reading, map service, etc. Lending service, utility services, etc. Deposit the publications by copyright law. International collaboration. Actually, uh, I don't know the uh, what is the benefit of collaboration. I know uh, the IPLA, we are the member of International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, UNESCO, International ISBN Agency, International ISSN Center, CDNL, and CDNLO. Future plan. We have planned to establish a e-management service the slogan of the e-management service is let's go paperless library. In this regard, government already takes initiatives to increase budget and technical manpower. It has a future to plan a proceed with for the greater interest of its own as well as of the overall development of the library permission system and services of Bangladesh. Now, National Library provides only manual services. Uh, we have a project uh, 2096. Uh, uh, 2,900 uh, uh, crore, a uh, big project for the digital digitization and smart to make smart Bangladesh. Website, this is our, our rear collection uh, like this. Yeah, This is Calcutta Gadget. It is Linguistic Survey of India. Preservation process is very manual. This is types of books, papers, uh, preservation of books, Air pulling, maps, gadgets, preservation, digital preservation. Yeah, digital 
digitization of documents using automatic book scanner. Uh, automatic book scanner, you know, very well. So we didn't brief it. Okay. Describe it. Digitization of newspaper using Artist Book Type Pro. This is digitization of math by HD flooded scanner. These types of machines in Bangladesh. Yeah. Bibliographical activities in NLB. This is cataloging activities in NLB. Accession activities in NLB. This is data entry activities in Kuha software. That Kuha indicated library management software. Where we are in where we are in data entry in all types of books and magazines and journals. Uh, server of the NLB. Uh, uh, thank you uh, for your kind attention and thank you so much for seeing. Have any question? Большое спасибо вам за доклад. Было очень интересно. Мы очень Thank you рады. very much for your report. We are really happy that you could connect and participate in our conference. It was really exciting to hear you. And our last presenter is Susanna Fostova, the chief bibliographer of the Center of History of Kaliningrad Science Library. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can yes. hear you very well. Thank you. Great, thank you. I'm very happy to be the last uh, presenter in this series of great reports. And I would uh, first of all like to know that our library does not have uh, a single design project because uh, we uh, we were separated into a single library only a couple of years ago, but uh, nevertheless, I would like to share the case that we uh, have and which challenges we face and uh, are there any pros and cons in uh, the way our library was developed. So, Kalingrad Regional Scientific Library was founded in 1946. It is the same age as the Kaliningrad region, which was formed on one third of the territory of the German province of Eastern Russia. The history of the library's formation is closely connected with the history of cultural construction in post-war Kaliningrad, formerly Königsberg. It was the first Soviet library in the region. In two years after the establishment, it found its home in the building of the former state archive. It is necessary to talk about the design features of the archive building. The state archive was established in the 18th century. You could see it in the picture, the exterior. According to archivists, the large influx of documents during the First World War caused a shortage of storage space and it prompted employees to think about building uh, a separate uh, library. A special department was created to design it. The location was chosen, taking into account the convenience of the traffic. The functionalism style is the most suitable for describing the architectural form of the new archive building. It was divided into two buildings, administrative and archival storage. On the first floor of the administrative part, there was the office apartment of the departmental assistant, three rooms, kitchen, bathroom, and the so-called sorting room for the primary processing of documents. The reading room occupied most of the second floor. 21 workplaces were organized for readers, which was 10 times more than in the period when it was a castle. For the reading room, the window area was specially increased, which is noticeable from the outside when compared with the other floors. The interior color scheme of the reading room is noteworthy. The walls were made in a light matte purple color. The tabletops and chair seats were covered with green, green floor. Uh, it was covered with red cork linoleum. The windows were coated with, with a color circle of art theorist Johannes Eaton, who taught at the State House of Construction, Bauhaus, which was the ideological center of the European functionalism. 
the color wheel could be used in different ways uh, according to it and this is a color harmony because when mixed these colors give a neutral gray color which is responsible for the psychological state of balance necessary for our vision interestingly the yellow purple pair was repeated twice more in the design of the building First, in the exterior of the archive, the facade was decorated with the light yellow plaster and uh, the wooden frames of the administrative building were painted brown and purple. Then the same combination flashes on the interior of the staircase, the walls around which were light purple gray and the wooden doors leading to the staircases and the staircase railings were made of light polished bronze. On the third floor, there were six rooms designed for senior officials and the secretary. The fourth and the fifth floors were government apartments, seven rooms for rent, which were temporarily occupied by the director of the archive. Um, during the war, the structural features of the building were not damaged, but the repair work turned out to be huge, in particular, they destroyed brick walls, ceilings, heating system, and everything was restored in places uh, white by whitewashing, concreting, plastering, and glazing of the building by 60%. Everything was carried out again. In the summer of 1948, the building began to be developed by librarians. Over the next uh, 70 years, the location of the departments has changed several times, and it can be said that in the modern times, the building's capabilities for library services are used most effectively. Last but not least, the archives design solutions played a role in this. The most obvious illustration of this is the functional continuity of the rooms on the second floors. Uh, the reading room, as in pre-war times, welcomes visitors who want to work with important documents, in our case, books and periodicals. Behind the reading room, as before, there are office premises, as well as the one of the subscription departments and the Department of Electronic Ordering. At the same time, the second floor of the administrative building has direct access to the former archive, modern book storage, which, as before, accelerates the service of visitors to the reading room. It is also worth noting that this particular part of the floor of the modern book storage adjacent to the floor of the reading room of the administrative wing was used as an archival library in the pre-war period, only before the entrance of readers that was strictly prohibited. And now it is the front of the reading room with open access. The theory of architectural planning of library buildings formed including the Soviet era argued that the most necessary services of the institution for the reader, most often alone, should be located closer to the entrance. A catalog room and the reference bibliographic department should be organized in the vicinity to clarify the information. In the case of our library, this requirement is logically met by using the spaces of the first floor, where the electronic resources is also lo located. Uh, stationary metal racks, which form the basis of the entire storage system, also perform a continuous function. However, the space is uh, limited. Um, so, uh, so we have to cope uh, somehow. Uh, as for the pros uh, and uh, cons uh, of this effect, the library is certainly lucky that its predecessor was an institution similar to its function. This continuity has had a positive effect on the organization of the book delivery system, which does not overlap with the reader's tracks inside the library. Adjustable shelves and storage system also meet library needs. At the same time, storage volume does not fully meet the requirements that are imposed on libraries. Uh, there are not many places for public events, which is logical, given the original purpose of the building. In addition, it is difficult, if necessary, to change the route 
of the visitors movement and and navigate them in space at the first visit uh, in conclusion i would like to say that the architectural heritage of the library is our key advantage and an important resource and if the library's mission is to educate and carry culture the heritage that these walls contain serves this purpose by its mere presence in urban space. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much for your report. It was great to follow such a long history of your building. Dear colleagues, I would like to thank you for your interesting reports and a very exciting conference. I would like to remind you that this conference is uh, being recorded, so we would be very happy if you could watch the recording and share the link uh, of this recording with your colleagues and everyone you know. Once more, thank you for your participation, and I hope to see you again in our future events. Thank you.